The first guest tonight uh, is an actor, a musician, a producer, a uh, director and author, and to millions of television viewers, however, he will always be known as Ricky Ricardo. Uh, more than a pleasure now to welcome Mr. Desi Arnaz. Very nice to see Thank you. Thank you. Cuban Pete, Whoa. huh? Yeah. Thank, yeah. You. Uh, Thank you, David. Thanks for being on the show. What is it? Uh, now, this reaction, uh, you must get this wherever you go. People like you, they love you, they've seen you on television for a long, long time. It must be very gratifying. We love them, too. Yeah. Did you, uh, uh, at any point uh, in the project, realize what you were getting into, that this thing was going to be? <laughs> no, that's, that's kind of one of those things, you know, that um, if you're lucky enough, maybe, they say once in a lifetime yeah. deal, you know. Yeah. And, uh, we, uh, we wanted to work together. And Lucy was doing a radio show called My Favorite Husband. And then CBS wanted her to... Uh, was the radio show version as popular as the TV show turned out to be It was a later. very popular radio show, yeah. She was on for about three years. And then they wanted her to transfer to television. And I, we, you know, we wanted to work together. Yeah. So she says, I want Desi to play the husband. Well, the husband in the radio show was Richard Denning, the guy that played the governor in Hawaii Five-O, you know? Well, it's a tall, blonde, blue-eyed vice president of a bank or something. I said, I'll, I'll never be able to get away with that part, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so the same writers that were doing My Favorite Husband, Jess Oppenheimer and uh, Bob Carroll Jr. and Madeline Davis, they're now doing ours, Bob and Madeline. Are. Mm -hmm. They, you know, kind of came up, uh, and me with the music, and the orchestra leader, and uh, then nobody wanted me to play Ricky. Uh, by nobody, you mean the, the heads of the network, I would guess? The network, the sponsor, nobody. You yeah. know, and they said, who the hell is going to believe this uh, Baba Lou fellow is going to be married to this <laughs> yeah. typical American girl, you know? Yeah. Funniest part of it is that we had been married for 10 years right then, you know? Uh, so, so how was this thing finally resolved? How did you bump Mr. Denning out of the picture? Well... You know, George M. Cohan always said that those people out there, the audience, they tell you what's good and what isn't. Mm -hmm. you know? So I told Lucy, I said, maybe they're right. Maybe nobody will believe you and <laughs> work it together, you know. So in those days, I had the big band, you know, yeah. and we used to do vaudeville, play the Paramount Theater, and the Roxy, that's not there anymore. So I said, well, the next time that I go on tour, why don't you come with me, you know? We'll do a couple of numbers together and see what the audience thinks of us working together. So we worked at Roxy here in New York, when we're still there. Uh, Radio City, Minneapolis, that's not there anymore. Chicago Theater. We picked about five or six, you know, cross-country yeah. places. And the audience were wonderful. And Mr. Paley, which is the head of CBS at the time, chairman of the board, he saw us on the stage, I said, well, the audience seems to like them together, and they have been married for 10 years, or maybe they'll believe <laughs> that they're not uh, At the time... They don't the, give you enough credit, uh, ever. At yeah. the time, though, I guess it, uh, uh, a more exotic coupling you couldn't come up with. It seemed <laughs> a guy from yeah. Cuba, and then the old And American then the people hat. that work with us, you know, Fred and Ethel, they were just sensational, yeah. you know. Uh, right. It, yeah, in the television program, you and Lucy slept in separate beds. Now, uh, <laughs> there, were, there were some other things that uh, they wouldn't let you do. And when we come back after the commercial, I want to talk about uh, okay. other things that you couldn't do uh, on television. Uh, we talked about you couldn't sleep in the same bed. What, what other kinds of things, uh, compromises, did you have to make well, for the Well, show? you know, when she was going to have the baby, uh, I told the uh, head writer at the time, was uh, Jess Oppenheimer, and I said, Lucy's going to have a baby. She says, what are we going to do? I said, what do you mean, what are we going to do? She's going to have a baby. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> she already had my daughter, Lucy. Uh -huh. And uh, they won't let us do the thing. You know, you couldn't even say they were pregnant in those days. Right. They say I had to say, expecting. <laughs> <laughs> so that... <laughs> It was better for me to use Spectin anyway. Yeah, you know? yeah. It still is. Could never get her laugh with pregnant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
Finally, the, uh, the, the, the head of Philip Morris was a wonderful old guy called Alfred Lyons. He, he wrote him a note saying, don't uh, uh, <laughs> fool around with the Cuban. Uh -huh. I cleaned it up a little. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that was one of the most successful shows of the whole uh, run, wasn't it? You believe they won't let us do it? They said, well, can you hide her, you know, be, be behind high chairs or sitting down on a table? I said, not Lucy. When she gets pregnant, brother, there's no question about it. She, <laughs> she wobbles around like a big elephant. There's no way, yeah. Yeah. no way to hide her for six months, you know? Yeah. So uh, now he's making a picture. My daughter is... Uh, doing a show for HBO, and she's going on the road with her husband, Larry Luckenbill, and I do, I do. I'm the only bum in the family. I'm the only one that's not working. Now, in addition <laughs> to being on the, 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 the television program, which is uh, just legendary, uh, you were responsible for other firsts. You developed the first uh, way to syndicate off network television shows, um, which this one. Well, one of the only ones that did a, yeah. that did a, uh, a, a in front of an audience. In front of an audience? Three, multiple cameras. Sometimes you use four cameras, like you use three here. They had been doing them live, hadn't they? And you were doing it on film? We always did it on film, mm -hmm. but in front of an audience. Right. We had never used kind of laughter. Yeah. That's why uh, the <laughs> some of our laughter I hear in some other shows. Now, is that, uh, is, is that true? I've heard yeah. that rumor before that the, the audience sounds from your program is still Well, used. you know, you worked in front of an audience most of your life. And you know, sometimes you get the regulars and you can detect the same laughter. Right. But Lucille's mother, you couldn't miss her laugh, Didi. <laughs> and my assistant director, Jim Paisley, and you know, he was close like around here, you know, so not only did they, the audience microphone picked up his laugh, but your, our dialogue might mm -hmm. pick up his laugh. So we had the dialogue, the laughter, the music, the applause, everything on the same track with all four cameras coordinating one soundtrack. You know, the first time anybody done that. And that's what made Desi Lu a big, uh, big success. Yeah. And, but you now have heard those laughs for many, many years back on new shows? On other shows, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they you're... lift them up. <laughs> uh, what, is, what is, as a musician, what was your uh, first instrument? What was your instrument of uh, preference? I have a guitar. Guitar? All Cubans play the guitar and sings. You need that. <laughs> You need that to romance. Uh -huh. so we serenade. I just say I, I've been on your show. I oh. just... <laughs> hey, Jack! <laughs> Well, uh, I was just telling David, right. I just, saw him across the way there in the dressing rooms. I, I met, I, I, uh, I've never met uh, Jack Parr before, and I met him uh, earlier tonight, and I said, why don't you uh, be a guest on our show? And he said uh, something to the effect, it sounded like fat chance. I don't know what he said. Um, <laughs> and and he, he, uh, he said that, okay, he would consider it, and uh, so there he was. I guess <coughs> well, he did it. Now, do we, do we have to pay him for that? The strangest thing I thought that not as much as you pay me, and that's not a hell of a lot. <laughs> no, <so> <laughs> uh, what, uh, there's nobody getting rich on this deal, let me tell you. Uh, anyway, but you I do it for the love. <laughs>